Hi guys and a belated welcome to week nine. I apologize that I'm running a bit late with the video this week. Monday was a public holiday and yesterday I just could not get a quiet spot to record. So I'm recording today on uh, as a screen share rather than uh, a video because I wanted to just point out a few things to you around the site. Um, what we've got on this week is primarily, I'm sure you guys are going to be focusing on your blog post. Um, we have our first marking point coming up. So that's where my attention is going to be uh, in this video. And at the end, I'm going to talk about our class on Friday. So um, as you are well aware, this week we are heading into the first point at which we are marking your blog post. So I've put some information about that um, over here in the right hand column on the site. So we will be marking your first posts from week two to week seven um, after Sunday. So you've got till 11.59 p.m. Sunday night to polish up those posts and get them ready for us to mark. Now to help you with doing this, we've done a few things. We have put up a post that is a checklist where you can um, run through and make sure that you have done a bunch of key things that we find that students sometimes don't do. So for example, we're asking you, have you written to topic? Have you written engaging content? Have you given your posts descriptive, appropriate and engaging titles? Have you applied the required categories and tags to your posts? Um, have you added other relevant tags to your blog posts? Have you made sure you have only used media that isn't in copyright? So st stuff that's in the public domain or Creative Commons licensed. Have you made sure you've correctly cited sources? Have you checked you've met the assignment criteria? That's a very important one. Have you been through the general feedback on the week two blog posts? And the final one is, have you checked your spelling and grammar? So under each of those questions in this post, we've given you a little bit of information to help you with um, working through that particular question and making sure that your posts are ready. Now this isn't a checklist that you can apply at 9 p.m. Sunday night and think you're going to get through it by 11.59. Obviously there are some quick things here like checking that you've put the tags on the post and that kind of thing, but getting your post ready for submission is going to take a little bit of time. So I've also put up a blog post for you on etiquette related to updating blog posts, how um, conventionally we make these changes after the fact. So if you need to uh, change a typo, there's some information on what you might do. Um, there's some info on what you might do if you need to um, update the content significantly. Um, so these are kind of conventions used by bloggers. Um, do you need to follow them for editing your posts in this unit? Well, it'd be nice if you did. Um, it will help you to get into the habit of doing this in the way that is um, generally accepted. And it's also good because it'll allow you to see how your posts and your ideas have, um, have changed over time. So have a look at that information there too. Of course, we put information up on the critical reflection page about writing critical reflections. So that's been there since the beginning of semester and is still there. Um, and you can work through the uh, unpacking the critical reflection criteria if you want to get a good overview of the criteria. Hope you've done that already though. Um, and any other information about the assignment, it's assignment to the learning blog and everything is right here on that page, um, including a video overview of the assignment, a list of all the content related to critical reflection and a feed of all the blog posts um, related to that assignment here on the page. Below that, of course, you've got the um, general information and background about the assignment. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. The, the key things to remember are get the post into the best shape you can by Sunday night, and then you can sit back and relax, sort of, um, while we mark your post. So you need to just keep moving on with um, this week's post and next week's post, um, and we'll get our, the marking back to you just as soon as we can. So just as a reminder, there is that little um, bit of information here on the home page uh, about your uh, due date, including some links to some information to help you as well as a link to the forums. Don't forget, you can post any questions you've got in the forums and we will answer them as soon as we can. 
So not only do we have a marking checkpoint this week, you've also got two posts to put up by Sunday night. The first of those is the week seven activity. Remember we gave you uh, an extra week on week seven, which was the theory week, and you've got the week eight activity as well. So by 11.59 p.m. Sunday night, you need to have posted those two posts. So from last week, we have started putting up two topics each week and we'll do that for most of the rest of the semester to give you some options for what you actually learn about in this unit. So each week we're putting up two sets of weekly learning resources and we're asking you to choose one of those to explore in detail. I know I went through this last week, so I won't spend too much time explaining it, um, except to say that this week there are two topics, creativity and making, and the second one is quantified and connected lives. So um, there is two resources for creativity and making that I'll ask you to read if that's the topic you're not choosing. Um, and if you're not choosing quantified and connected lives, there is one article there for you to read. Um, so we're going to have a workshop on quantified and connected lives, so I won't spend too long talking about that now, but I did just want to talk briefly about creativity and making. So when I talk about creativity and making, I'm not just talking about crafting. I'm talking about things like, like the things that some of you guys in this class do. I know that you're really interested in cars and um, in building and working on cars. That is making. Um, making is also using um, technology to make things as part of hobbies. Um, and the reason that we're focusing on this, this topic this week is that the maker movement has largely been fueled or is um, really gaining momentum through social media. So I wanted you to have a think about how social media can um, play a role in your hobbies of <clears throat> creativity, um, or your creative hobbies or your making hobbies or as I said some, in some of the cases in this class you guys are tinkering with technology or playing um, or working with cars. So have a look at the resources that are here. There's some information about the maker movement and just how powerful it is that I'd like you to have a look at. Um, again, it's a bit of an article that I've written for you on the topic. Um, I've also given you a bit of a creative case study um, from a professional who is um, in my personal learning network. And I think you'll find that um, really useful and interesting too. Okay, I also just want to talk briefly about our class this week. Our class is going to be in a different classroom. It's going to be in S306. Um, we will have a team of um, guest lecturers with us from the data um, analytics project, the uh, Connected Learning Analytics Toolkit, and they are going to be working with you to look at your data that you're generating in this unit and what you can do with it. And of course that fits well with this week's topic, Quantified and Connected Lives, um, because it will allow you to think about the um, data that you're developing in this unit and how you can quantify some of your activities at the end of the semester in your final reflective blog post. So please come along. Um, we would like you to come in person. There will be no online version of class this week. Okay, so this is the um, first time we've done this all semester, but this class is on campus only. We will record it, but it's going to be interactive, so I'm not sure exactly how well the recording will translate. Um, come along if you can. Um, if you are coming, please bring a laptop with you as we will be doing some activities and there is not one single computer lab available at Gardens Point at 11 o'clock on Friday. Um, so we need to ask you to bring your laptops along. Don't stress if you don't have one, we will make do with the amount that we end up having in the classroom. That will be absolutely fine. I also just wanted to quickly say thank you to those of you who came along to the poster exhibition on Friday night. I think um, we had a lot of fun and it was really great to see your work up on the cube. Um, I'll be posting a couple of photos and inviting you guys to post any photos you've got too. Um, and we had winners of prizes that I'll also announce in a blog post as well. Okay, I'll leave it there and I will see you in class on Friday. Check the class page for the room and don't forget to bring your laptop with you. See you guys, have a great week.